I was originally charged with 16 different federal counts. I was found guilty for 11 of them. I received life without parole, 20, 20, 20, 20, 40, 40, 40, 40, and an 80 year sentence altogether. So total 80 years No, total life without parole plus 320 years. Yeah. 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, 40 years, 40 years, 40 years, 40 years, 40 years and an 80 year sentence on top of the life sentence that I, without parole that I had. Yeah. Just for selling? For selling drugs, yeah. First time nonviolent drug offender. There's something wrong with our system. There's a lot of things wrong with it. Does that mean that I didn't deserve to go to prison? I think that I did. Did I, do I think that I deserved a sentence that resulted in me staying there until I died? I don't think that I, that I did. And that's why I reached out to the president to ask me to give me, to give me a second chance. And President Obama did what? President Obama commuted my sentence from life without parole plus 320 years down to 20 years on December 19th, 2013. You went in one time. What, what did you go in? I went in on March 16th, 1998. I was 21 years old. You came out? August the 11th, 2015. I was 39 years old. You had a, you had a child? Yes, my son, Jason Jr. He was seven months when I was arrested. When I was released, he was 19 years, 19 years old. What are you going around doing now? I would like to think that I go around spreading hope as opposed before when I was selling nothing but dope in this community, uh, trying to change better and save lives. And not just one, not just two, but uh, hundreds, if not thousands and thousands. That's, that's my goal. The east side is what? The east side is where I was born at. It's my home. It's, uh, it's what made me the man that I am today. It's a beautiful place. It's not perfect. I don't think any community is, but it's where my family laid their roots at back in the 1950s when they moved here. And I did a lot of wrong there. And I would like to think now I'm doing a lot of right for that community. Yeah, the day that I was arrested, uh, which I knew we were gonna talk about throughout this interview, and it was a reason why I didn't want to do this interview, right? I kept on pushing it, didn't answer phone calls, because I knew we were going to talk about two of the most tragic days of my life, right? That was being arrested March 16, 1998, and then my brother's murder on March 28, 2002. Uh, things that I wanted to just I've suppressed that I don't want to think about, right? Because it's hard to deal with them. And to practically relive those memories over, yeah, it's tough. Uh, but then I know as well, a lot of the things that I did in the community was tough on a lot of people. So it's just making amends. And me, I think my, my coping mechanism is trying to better the community to, as, as I've been doing it. You, uh, you're getting signatures from what's up? I'm getting signatures from uh, people in the community to persuade President Biden that I deserve a pardon from him. And I want my felony conviction completely off my record. Uh, I mean, I, I believe I can tell him that I'm a changed man. I can tell him that all the things that I've been doing and I want to do in the community but I think it's different when it comes from people in the community, a community that once wanted to put me away, and then now a community that has accepted me just like their own son, uh, you know, brother, as we witnessed earlier, right? A, a community that, that now they smile when they see me, right? They hug me when they see me, as opposed 20, 30 years ago, they weren't smiling when they saw me, right? They didn't want to hug me. They wanted to handcuff me. Like you're still in prison. Yeah, still feel like I'm in prison because of that 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 hovering over me. If I get when I get pulled over, that's gonna pop up on a police officer's uh, a record check about me. If I move into an apartment, if I apply for a job, if I apply for a scholarship, if I apply for a grant to go to college, there's that box that says check if you've been convicted of a felony. And when you check that box, nine times out of ten, whatever you're trying 
to ask for, you're not going to get it, no matter how long it's been or no matter what you've done in the community to try to make up for the wrong that you've done. Say that line again, you still feel like you're in prison. Say that line again. Yeah, I still feel like I'm incarcerated, even though I'm not physically incarcerated. Right? I've, I have a loss of civil liberties and rights that other individuals have that they take for granted, the right to vote, something that I can't do. So in getting these signatures, you're really regaining what? You're hoping you're hoping to get back what? My freedom. I want to, through this, through these signatures, you know, through the, through the signatures, right, I think that's something way different now that I look at it than what I'm, I am trying to convince President Biden that my community has forgave me, right, has accepted me back. But I think it, during the whole time, it was more, the signatures weren't for him. They were for me so that I could feel that despite all the wrong that I did, that people forgive me for, for, all, the, for all the wrong that I did. And it feels good, right? It feels really good. Uh, Why are you tearing up? Because I, I, you know, I carry this, uh, this pain of what I did. I mean, my brother, I'm out here. My, my brother's not out here, right? No matter, no matter what happens, my brother died. Right? I walked through, that, throughout them, through, through those prison doors, but my brother didn't get that opportunity. And sometimes you, you make mistakes in your life and sometimes you can't correct them. You can't ask for forgiveness. And I feel that through what I'm doing, I'm doing that for my brother. Because just how people looked at me, they looked at my brother as well. My brother was a drug dealer. And I'm, through the acts that I'm doing, not only am I redeeming myself, but I'm redeeming him as well. Where we just, we weren't bad kids. We were just kids who made bad decisions. Uh, and we paid dearly for them. My brother paid, lost his life for it, and I nearly lost mine. Right? And, and I hope that through this story, that it's just not for people that are, who look at me in a different way. People who sell drugs or who, people who, come, who are in prison. But, but people that are making these decisions that are selling drugs or people that are incarcerated, right? That we're destroying our own community. We're destroying our own people. I was selling drugs in my community, right? And where I was born and raised at, right? Where my son was born and raised at, where my mother and father moved here for a better opportunity. I was poisoned in my community, right? And I, I, I have to live with that for the rest of my life. Again, I didn't kill nobody, I didn't rape nobody, but I do think that what I did is, is not worse, you know, if not equivalent, it's not worse than, than what those individuals do. You feel some redemption after today? I, I feel a lot of, re <laughs> not fully redeemed, but I do feel a lot of redemption. Uh, and I think right here, being at this place where my brother was buried at, I mean, I've, I've, I've felt him, <laughs> right? I felt something, I can tell you that. And I think everybody here felt it as well. One thing that you want people to grasp from this? I think at the end of the day, that we all make mistakes. And I have been able to make up for the mistakes that I've done when I was younger. But I haven't, I didn't do that by myself. I've had help from the highest sources that you can think of, whether that's the President of the United States that let me out, to the people in the community that we met today. Your local neighborhood uh, mother, aunt, that has helped me. And that of all the wrong that I've done, if these individuals on both sides of this spectrum can not only forgive me, but help me as well, then that we all should be able to have that same empathy and forgiveness for other individuals, no matter what they've done in life. That we all make mistakes, we all make mistakes, and it shouldn't impact us for the rest of our life.